Space Force. Space Force. Just the name sounds funny. Whenever I see it, I think Space Force. Watch this Space Force. Space Force might sound like an ayahuasca vision that President Trump had after an all-night marathon of Battlestar Galactica. But it's actually serious. Deadly serious. Let me explain. Space Force wasn't a thing until Trump willed it out of thin air back in 2018. They said, maybe we need a new force, we'll call it the Space Force. And I was not really serious, and then I said, what a great idea, maybe we'll have to do that. And as new details emerged, they seemed about as well thought out as the initial pitch. Like the new military branch's logo, which bears a striking resemblance to the Starfleet Command insignia from Star Trek. Interesting design. I've never seen anything like it. And the fact that its members were dubbed Guardians, as if that name weren't Take it. They call themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. What a bunch of a-holes. Guardians will be decked out in a very earthy camo, which is actually somehow less logical than this. Part of the problem is that nobody seems to know what Space Force is for, including whoever's making their recruitment videos. Maybe your purpose on this planet isn't on this planet. And purpose is something even Space Force higher-ups have struggled with. I know we set up the Space Force. It was not my favorite thing. I, I believe I was on the advisory board, but it didn't make any meetings. <laughs> uh, listen, it's like the Girl Scouts. I, I was part of it, and then I never showed up. The new chief of space operations, General John Raymond, has been trying to clear all this up. Like the time he said Space Force is, quote, not a farce, which is exactly the kind of thing you say when something is absolutely, definitely not a farce. As to why Space Force isn't doing the best job of marketing itself to the public, General Raymond told reporters, quote, space doesn't have a mother. You can't reach out and hug a satellite. You can't see it. You can't touch it. It's hard to have that connection. Counterpoint, space does have a mother that made a connection. The mothership connection! And all that has done basically nothing to shatter the idea that Space Force will be a bunch of Astro Commandos dogfighting alien starships around Saturn. That's called placing your linebackers. But Space Force isn't really about war in space. It's about war on Earth. Military planners here on terra firma look at space as the ultimate high ground. If you have enough satellites up there, you can see everything happening down here. They're the eyes and ears of a modern military, used for everything from spying on terrorist camps to piloting drones. Without them, America's high-tech military isn't so high-tech anymore, with no precision-guided anything. And that would be particularly unfortunate for the US, which relies more on satellites than any other country, which may be why General Raymond's so keen on hugging them. After all, every floating hunk of space metal needs the tender, loving caress of a newly formed military branch that's just been given $15.2 billion to make starships or something. When America needs space, which is all the time, uh, space is always there. Too true. The U.S. reliance on satellites also explains why rival powers see taking them out as a way to level the playing field. China shot down one of its own satellites in 2007, freaking out the Pentagon, which thought it looked like target practice. Last year, Russia sent two weird little satellites suspiciously close to an American government satellite, then sent them zigzagging away again. A few months later, the U.S. said one of them test-fired a space weapon. A lot of experts predict that whenever the next big conflict comes, each side will start by trying to take out the other guy's satellites. The U.S., Russia, and China are all thought to have the ability to blind each other's satellites by zapping them from Earth with powerful lasers. Which seems high-tech, if you forgot about this. Laser tag. It's hotter than ever. Launching Space Force has military experts fantasizing about what real space battle might look like. Some have said that, out in the cosmos, kamikaze space bots might try to ram each other off course, or that these bots might fry each other with microwave guns. If they're sneaky, 
One side could hack the other guy's satellites and send phony data back down to Earth, which could give one side the all clear when the enemy's at their door. Or send a rocket back at whoever fired it. Of course, one of the easiest ways to take down a satellite is also the messiest. Hit it with a good old fashioned missile. But the resulting hailstorm of debris could really screw up space for everybody by smashing into other satellites and making space hard to clean up even after the shooting stops. And that would suck for all of us because the guardians of Space Force are hardly the only ones using space these days. You are too, a lot. You're probably watching this on a device connected to a Space Force satellite system literally right now. It's called GPS. And it's basically just a couple dozen satellites launched by the US military that now, you guessed it, belong to Space Force. If all satellites went dark tomorrow, you'd have a bigger problem than just figuring out how to use this thing again. Global communications would go haywire. TV channels and ATMs would start futzing out. Power grids and cell phone networks would begin to fail. Pretty soon the internet would freeze up. And a world without internet is, well, Which brings us back to the question of whether setting up a new branch of the military to deal with this stuff was a good idea in the first place. The Pentagon's been thinking about this since Trump was a game show host, but critics argue that creating a new military branch was a bad idea because it was needlessly provocative. They argue it sends the wrong message. You guys better get your space war game on because the Lord knows we are. It is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. If trying to dominate space sounds crazy to you, remember that the history of the space race is full of world leaders proposing shit that is downright insane. Like the once top secret plan hatched by the US Air Force to respond to the Soviet Union's Sputnik launch by nuking the moon. I'll say that again. They wanted to nuke the moon. The idea was to set off a nuclear blast right behind the visible ridge of the moon, creating a dazzling lunar mushroom cloud that could be seen from below while Soviet citizens watched in terror. Cooler heads prevailed, but the hotheads weren't out of ideas. In 1983, President Ronald Reagan rolled out plans for a space-based anti-missile system called the Strategic Defense Initiative, popularly known as Star Wars. And in that struggle, if you'll pardon my stealing a film line, the force is with us. Soviet leaders had a collective heart attack and ramped up military spending even further. The concern today is that we're all just at it again. By trumpeting military plans for space, we may just be making a tense situation worse. After all, Space Force isn't even making anything new yet. It's just pulling together the space programs that already existed from the Air Force, Army, and Navy under one big Trumpy label. But now that it's been passed by Congress and signed into law, President Joe Biden is stuck with it, whether he likes it or not. Wow, Space Force. And it may be a self-fulfilling prophecy, one that encourages the kind of aggression in space it's supposed to tamp down on. I see your Schwartz is as big as mine. Thinking about space as a battlefield skips over all the other cool stuff we use satellites for all the time, like hailing a rideshare, checking the weather, getting directions to anywhere beyond the grocery store, or knowing, down to the exact block, how far away our delivery tacos are. Maybe General Raymond is right, that we can't hug satellites, but maybe we'd be better off if we tried.